What's going on guys? Josh here from Momentum Productions and today I wanna to show you how to mount your camera vertically on your gimbal. So why do we want to mount our cameras vertically? Well, it's a great idea to use this as another way of shooting your videos, especially for IGTV. You can also broaden your creativity horizons and use vertical mode to capture some of your creative shots. So keep that in mind. And using it with the gimbal is a great way to get smooth shots and of course, cinematic shots. Today we're going to be using the Juin Crane 2 along with the Sony A7S Mark I, a 16-35 Zeiss f4 lens, and a Warax camera cage. Now this same method of using your camera in vertical mode applies to any sorts of cameras, cages, gimbals, so don't worry if you don't have the same exact equipment that I'm using in this video. So why do we need a camera cage? A camera cage allows us to mount the camera in multiple different orientations. So you can see here that there are multiple threads around the cage. Now, how are we gonna mount this camera cage on the gimbal? Well, we're just gonna use a regular quarter 20 inch port, mount it onto the quick release system of the Juin Crane 2, and then use the same balancing methods as you would regularly use if a camera was properly mounted on its regular orientation. If you don't know how to balance a gimbal, go ahead and check out one of my videos right here because those will greatly help you. Now you also have to decide which part of the camera will be facing down because on different cameras, there's ports on multiple sides of the camera. Now on the A7S Mark I, I did notice that there are multiple ports on the left side of the camera and not really anything going on on the right side of the camera. However, the record button is there so it could be tricky to get to, but I wanna make sure that a lot of my ports are easily accessible. Also, the battery compartment is easily accessible when mounted vertically, so that's another nice perk right there. Once you've decided which side of the camera you want to be mounted, go ahead and mount the quick release system and then mount it onto the Crane 2, and as I said before, balance it like it was regularly mounted. Don't forget that because you are mounting your camera vertically, you're going to have much more weight on the top end of your camera, meaning that you are going to have to mess with that adjustment more frequently. So keep that in mind. And if you're using a camera with a cage, odds are you're probably not gonna get perfect balance. But don't worry about that because with the Crane 2, you are getting a ton of power out of the motors so it can easily compensate for that top heaviness. Once your camera has been mounted onto the Crane 2, go ahead and check out the different shooting options with the Crane 2. For example, full follow, lock mode, POV mode. Make sure that everything is operating smoothly. As you can see here, everything is operating smoothly, which means that your camera is properly balanced. And yes, POV mode will work just fine even if your camera is mounted vertically. So right now I am testing out the vertical setup with my Sony a7S Mark I, my Crane 2, and my Zeiss 16 to 35 f4 lens. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments section below. Some things to remember, some of the buttons like on the a7S Mark I, the record button to be specific, can be very difficult to get to, so just remember that. You might even want to flip the camera on the other side if that's going to be easier for you but you are going to be blocking some of your ports, so just keep that in mind. Also, I do recommend shooting with autofocus turned on. That way, you don't have to worry about focus. That is, if your camera is good with focus, so keep that in mind as well. Also, I made a video tutorial on how to blind shoot without using a monitor. You can check it out right here. Now I know some of you are probably gonna be asking why you should use your DSLR or SLR camera over your iPhone or any other sort of mobile device. And the answer is, is that you can have the ability to change lenses, you get a shallower depth of field, you get a much more cinematic look, and overall your image quality is gonna be so much better. Don't forget that when you're flipping over your camera, you're changing the aspect ratio. So you're going from 16 by nine to nine by 16. So when you're using this kind of resolution in your editing workflow, make sure that you're exporting in that same exact setting. You don't wanna have any complications when you're uploading to IGTV. Also, I do strongly recommend shooting at the highest resolution as possible. For example, 4K, 6K, 10K, whatever your camera can allow. So keep that in mind because we want our shots to come out as crispy and as high res as possible. Don't forget that when your camera is vertically mounted on your Crane 2 gimbal, nothing really changes when it comes down to gimbal operation. So if you don't know how to properly use a gimbal, go ahead and check out these tutorials right here. 
Also, I did a review video on the camera cage that I'm using in this video. It's the Warax camera cage for the Sony a7S, so you can check it out right here. Small Rig is another great company that makes camera cages, and to my knowledge, they're the only ones so far who've made a Sony A9 camera cage. And don't worry, I'm gonna leave some links for you guys to check out in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a big like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel with notifications on. I can't wait to see what you create, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.